Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about Rail Development Authority. Okay, this is another very important topic, and this is one of the uh, biggest reforms you know Indian Railway came up with. And recently, the the government decided to come up with the Rail Development Authority to take care of the issues you know ailing the sector. And before going into the details of Rail Development Authority, let's see some of the you know, basic issues you know, prevailing in the you know, related with the Indian Railways. And as always, you know, you can use this background or you can use these you know, points to write introduction or you know, write the issues prevailing in the sector. First of all, the cross subsidization of passenger services by freight or good service. In the sense, uh, due to political reasons. I mean, the, the ministries or the, the government won't be increasing the tariff for passenger services. And they won't be even incurring the cost from the passengers, I mean, from the services they are providing for the passengers. Rather, it will be cross subsidized by the freight. Okay, so that the, the tariff for the good service or the freight will be very high when comparing with other you know, ways of transportation, especially road. And due to this reason, and due to this reason, we are witnessing a declining trend of rail market, especially in the case of goods transport. And this is one of the major, I mean, issues prevailing in the, uh, this sector. Okay, then, insubstantial growth in basic infrastructure due to underinvestment. Now, if you look at the rail network during our independence, it, the, the kilometer, the stretch was around 52,000 uh, kilometers. And uh, as of now, we have added another 14,000 kilometers. And that is very less. Okay, and why it is so? Because of underinvestment in you know establishing the network and the proper basic infrastructure, and we are witnessing more you know rail accidents, de especially deal deal railments. The thing for that is you know uh, the, the the rails they are actually you know overstretched and they are working beyond their safe limits, and that's why witnessing more deal railment. Okay, and all these things shows that I mean there is insubstantial growth in the basic infrastructure due to especially due to under investment the next one is announcing new trains for political gains here you know in order for i mean in order for the vote, vote bank politics you know whenever new, new government comes in they will be giving more trains uh, for their suitable places and you know they won't, won't be i mean they won't be financially viable i mean in the sense those routes may not be having enough traffic but in order for the political gains they will be announcing new trains and that will be creating new liabilities to the uh, Indian Railways, right? Then another one, private sector is discouraged from participating in various activities. In the sense, in Indian Railway, we are witnessing more monopolistic natures, uh, monopolistic, op I mean, operations, and uh, even Railway is taking care of non-core activities, like, you know, providing education, hospital, or things like that, okay? And here, due to, you know, various reasons in the sense, the policy making, as well as lack of regulation and things like that, private sector is discouraged from participating in the activities related with the Indian Railways. So as I said, you can use these points to address the issues prevailing in the sector. And the Rail Development Authority, it is trying to, you know, address these uh, these issues by you know reforming the sector so if you are being asked like how the how the rail development authority will reform the sector and you can use these points you know it, it is trying to address these things and now we will see how rail development authority is trying to address these issues first of all you know the the need for rail development authority like various committees has recommended the formation of the rail development authority and the reason one being the Bibek de Broy committee in 2015 and you can use this point you know uh, I mean you can use this point while saying the need for rail development authority and it will be creating more authenticity to the R point okay so Bibek de, Bro de Broy committee recommended the formation of RDA. Now, the Rail Development Authority is an independent body and the independence is created through separate budget. And this Rail Development Authority came into being through executive order. And you should note down, it's not through the statutory route or you know, it's not through the legislation, rather through executive order because it will be taking more time to make it, I mean, legisl legislative backing. So the government came, I mean, came up with the executive order in order to create the Rail Development Authority and the RDA will be making recommendations to the Railway Ministry about the key issues in the sector. Okay, now let's see what are the key functions of RDA. So if you are being asked, 
how the re, re, RDA will be reforming the sector, how it is trying to reform the sector. I mean, it is trying to reform the sector by performing the key, these key functions. Okay, first one, tariff determination. You know, delinking the populistic nature from tariff determination so that, you know, railway, railway can be, I mean, railway can be made profitable. In the sense, you know, as I already said, uh, the tariff determination or there is cross subsidization of passenger services with freight and that can be sold if the RDA can you know if the RDA can recommend it recommend the tariff based on the the cost of service okay next one ensuring level playing field for investors in the carrier I mean increasing their private uh, partnership or participation due to lack of policy setting as well as you know the contractual uh, the clauses in the contractual basis and since the 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 Indian Railway itself making the policies they won't be taking the risk related with the the partnership I mean a private partnership so that majority of the risk will be faced by the private players and this discourages the private participation in the activities of Indian Railway so the RDA will be playing an intermediary role between the private uh, player as well as the Indian Railway as a third 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 agency or a third party okay so uh, the next function is setting efficiency and performance standard you know you like the, uh, taking care of speed as well as you know the safety aspect and everything will be covered under uh, the efficiency and performance standard set by the rail development authority okay and next objective or function is information dissemination as of now like you know the information related with the Indian Railway they are a bit opaque so in order for a poll I mean before coming up with a new in policies or initiatives they will be seeking the public opinion and it will be done through the the rail development authority so that everyone will be having a voice in the policies related with the Indian Railways so these are the four key functions of uh, rail development authority and through these functions the Rail Development Authority is trying to reform the sector by addressing the issues which we have already discussed. Okay, now let's see uh, some of the major concerns related with the Rail Development Authority. First one, RDS role in fixing tariff will be advisory in nature. Now, I mean, as as the the press release says, you know, the, the Rail Development Authority they will be making recommendations to the Railway Ministry and you know with these recommendations the railway ministry can decide whether to take that or not so again you know it's a regulator without a proper teeth you know they are not having enough power to make proper decisions so still i mean the decisions they will be under i mean they will be under the railway ministry itself so that is one of the key concerns related with the rail development authority and you know gradually it has the rail development authority has to be completely separated from the ministries and it has to be given more power uh, to take proper decisions to proper organizational decisions related with Indian railways okay then lack of regulatory power may result in less investment by the uh, private players I mean as in the case of try or you know SEBI they are more I mean they are more independent and we cannot compare the RDA with the case of try or SEBI so that you know private players won't won't feel to invest in the sector because of no as I already said like uh, the the problems related with the policy setting and things like that so what happens is that since they are having they are lacking proper regulatory power still the private invest investment will will not be will not take place uh, with the Indian railways so these are the two major concerns related with the rail development authority and if you are being asked to critically evaluate you have to bring up these points you know are, are they being advisory in nature and they are lacking the regulatory power so that the private uh, investment will be very less okay next one like you know apart from this again if you are being critically I mean if you are being asked to critically evaluate this two of the major suggestions you can bring up here are need accounting reforms in the sense in another present case the accountings related with the Indian Railway they are very opaque for example if railway is coming up with a new train okay there is no way for a private player to understand that how profitable is this new route or what if I mean if they are coming up with a new stop for a train okay we are I mean there is no way to understand whether you know that is profitable to ha I mean whether it is having enough traffic there so I mean we are not having a 
proper cost benefit analysis and it is due to the the uh, i mean it is due to the improper accounting practices related with the indian railways so we need accounting reforms which can create the transparency so that the private players will be compelled to invest in it see before investing in anything everyone will be doing the cost benefit analysis right as of now the system is so opaque that the cost benefit analysis is not at all possible so we need more accounting reforms next one like you know focus on core activities i mean both of these suggestions they are actually from the bibig debroy committee so you can say that according to bibig debroy committee and we need accounting reforms and the railway needs to focus on core activities core activities in the sense you know operating the train and increasing the operational efficiency and reducing the operational cost now now the railway also focuses on providing education i mean the hospital service and all those things right instead of that that can be subsidized and that can be given to private players so that the indian railways they can focus more on their core activities and this will increase their operational efficiency i mean as per the bibig debroy committee so these are the two suggestions and you can put forward them as i mean as per the bibig debroy committee